Hi everybody, this is 25. So it says consider this right triangle here. So RSC, um, 21, 20, 35, and we could figure out what that is. Um, it says determine which whether each expression can be used to find the length of RS. So to find this side over here, select yes or no for each equation. So um, I have a bunch of equations here. Um, and I have like using sine, tangent, cosine, and tangent. So I'm thinking, okay, so Katoa is probably my idea. So let's call, I'm going to call this x over here. Right? So rs is x. I'm going to think about all the things that could involve x, right? So if I did, this is across from um, t, so if that's my opposite, then I could do x over 35. So sine of t equals opposite over hypotenuse. I could also say, okay, I know my, um, my adjacent, right? My adjacent over my, or opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent from T, that would be tangent. So tangent T is opposite X over adjacent 21, like that. So that would be if I had angle T and then for angle S, I don't really do too much with angle S because it has the um, it has the right angle here, right? So that's not that helpful. But I could do angle R. If I'm using angle R, then I would X would be a part of the um, that would be the adjacent now. So I'd have adjacent over hypotenuse. That'd be cosine. So cosine R equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the other one that would use my opposite and my adjacent would be tangent. Um, tangent R would be equal to opposite 21 over um, adjacent X. So I could do all of these different um, things in order to figure out what X is, right? Remember, since all of these, since this is on the bottom, I would move it over here by multiplying, so times 35 on both sides, times 21 on both sides of this one, times 35 on both sides of this one. Um, and then this one, I'd move the x over here. So it would be x times. And then I would divide the tangent to the other side. So divide by tangent r. So all of these are now like being able to solve for this side over here, our s. So I'm just going to look to see if any of them match. So 35 sine r, no, it's 35 sine t. So I'm going to go with no. Uh, 21 tan t, yeah, I see that one. So I'm going to say yes. 35 cosine r is, I agree with that one, yes. And 21 tangent r, uh, no, it's 21 divided by tangent r. So I'm going to go with no here. Right. Um, in this one, they're just wondering, they want to know if you can, like, think critically about how you could get x, right? how you could get x. So you can set up a bunch of them. Alternatively, you could guess and check um, and just, like, try to guess what this uh, angle is and what that angle is. Um, or you know that um, you could use Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out what this is. And then decide if each of these would match that. So interesting, a lot of different ways you could do it. All right, 26. It says, given the function y equals 3x squared minus 12x minus plus 9, place a point on the coordinate grid to show each x-intercept of the function. So when you click on place, it says to put in a particular place or position. So place a point on the coordinate grid to show each x-intercept, right? So I'm trying to find the x-intercepts along the x-axis. And then place a point on the coordinate grid to show the minimum value of the function, right? So minimum, remember, like the lowest point of the valley. We just did this last week. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to type in 3x 
squared uh, minus 12x plus 9. And I get this. I know um, my x-intercepts are along the x-axis at 1 and at 3. So I'm going to go over here and click at 1. Notice it doesn't do anything if I just click it. So I'm going to go to add point and then click 1 comma 0 and then 3 comma 0. Right? And then it says place a point on the coordinate grid to show the minimum value. Right? Remember the minimum is the lowest point right here at two comma negative three. I'm gonna to go to two comma negative three. And that's it, that's the answer. So it says Mike earns 650 per hour plus 4% of his sales. So he's like working on commission. Enter an equation for Mike's total earnings E and he works X hours and has total number of sales Y, or has Y has a total of Y sales in dollars. So his sales is Y and his hours are X. His earnings are E. So that's how much money he makes. Uh, so how much money he makes is 650 per hour. So this one we're probably used to 650 per hour. And they said X was hours. So I'm gonna put like that and then plus, 4% of his sales. So um, we have to do percentages. Um, the easiest way I think is to do like four divided by a hundred. You could do this on your calculator if you want, which is 0 0.04 if you can't remember what the decimal is. So 0 0.04 and then times how much his sales are. So Y sales. Uh, and this is the correct answer. Um, you could, you don't need to have that zero there and you technically don't need to have this zero here. Um, you could rearrange them if you want. You could put E over here if you want. Um, but uh, this is the general form of what you would want to have. If you wanted to, you could even put like a thing here and put four over 100. Um, that is an equivalent function as long as the Y is not in the fraction. So pretty cool. All right, the basketball team sold t-shirts and hats as a fundraiser. They sold a total of 23 items and made a profit of $246. They made a profit of $10 for every t-shirt they sold and $12 for every hat they sold. Determine the number of t-shirts and the number of hats the basketball team sold. All right, so I know that there are like a bunch of different situations that are happening here. Um, they sold a total of 23 items. So t-shirts plus hats equals 23. And they made a profit of 246. So money of t-shirts and money of hats gives me $246. They made $10 per t-shirt and $12 for hats. So I can see there's basically like a profit equation, like a money equation and like a number of items equation, right? This is a very like classic problem. I'm going to go to my calculator and try to make those equations here. So if I'm talking about a total number of equation, a total number of items, right? So an items equation, I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, t-shirts for me is going to be X and hats is going to be Y, right? Just put them in the order that they go. So X and Y. So on my page, like if I'm writing, if I'm drawing this down, I might even put like an X here and a Y here to remind myself t-shirts are X and hats are Y. They sold a total of 23 items. So if I add X together with Y, I'm gonna get 23. So on my um, calculator, I'm gonna write X plus Y equals 23. I should see a line, there's my line there. It says they made a profit of 246 $10 for every t-shirt X and $12 for every hat Y. So I'm gonna put 10X plus 12Y, right? This is my profit. How much money did they make? They made $246. So I'm gonna put 246 like this, right? So when these two items align where they come together, that is the number of t-shirts and hats that they made. Remember t-shirts is X and hats is Y. So t-shirts would be 15 in this case. 
um, t-shirts 15 and hats eight. Right, so 15 t-shirts and eight. If you wanna check it, you can um, just go here and you can do like 15 plus eight, that should give you 23, which it does. And then 10 times 15 would be 150. And then $12 times the eight hats would be $246. That's how much money they make. So we know that this is correct. So now let's find out. It says enter the number of t-shirts in the first response box. So t-shirts was 15. I'm gonna put a one five here. Enter the number of hats in the second response. So that's eight, put an eight here. And that's the answer. When you get to the end of the test, you'll see something that looks like this. You've reached the end, you click okay. And then you have to press this button, end tests. And then you say, um, you're about to end the test. Click yes to continue the next page. Click no if you wanna keep working on it. So click no if you wanna keep working. Click yes. And then it'll say, congrats, you've, met, you've reached the end. You're not done yet. You still have to go here and press submit. And then you press yes, submit. And then when it says test summary, your test was submitted, that's how you know you got to the end. So that's it, y'all. Good luck. You're going to be great.